Bienvenidos a Cuba. Located just 100 miles from Key West, Florida, it's a quick tropical trip many Americans never take because of the contentious political relationship between the two countries. Intimidating but not impossible, says Cuba Educational Travel, or CET President, Colin Laverty. It just takes a little bit of homework to read a little bit, and there's a lot of good material out there now. The Malecon is very nice. Beautiful. In the night, many people walk around it, all Malecon. There are few more iconic Cuban experiences than a drive down Havana's Malecon in a classic car. Eight kilometers, beginning here and finishing in Miramar. The coastal roadway stretches nearly five miles long with the Florida Straits swimming on its side. And sometimes the water comes. Yes. We are saying that this is a fast and furious. <laughs> Our driver Ernesto has been driving this government-owned 1957 Dodge for eight years, a period in which American tourists have come and gone. When December 17, 2014, when Raul Castro and Barack Obama announced the restoration of relations, it was amazing. I mean, there was church bells ringing, people hanging American flags off their balconies, literally tears coming down people's eyes. And so it was very emotional, because I think Cubans finally felt like their future was going to get better. That restoration, however, was short-lived, and the rules on travel between the U.S. and Cuba are in a constant state of flux. CET is one of many groups that specialize in organizing authorized trips to the island. If you end up coming with a tour company or a travel agent that can at least set some things up and, and give you some support on the ground, really doing some homework about you know, what applications to download and do some planning, because um, it can be a tough place to navigate if you just show up and expect that you know, you're going to use your phone to figure things out. Your smartphones may not work like you expect, but the past decade has ushered in some significant advances. It's a different place. We now have internet and some of the things that make it a lot easier. The food's gotten much better. There's really a lively culinary scene. So it's very different than five or 10 years ago. One thing Cuba has never run short on is hospitality. It's telling about the Cuban people that despite the, the challenging relationship between both governments, they love Americans. I don't think there's another country that they, they cherish more. In 2019, Havana celebrated its 500th anniversary. The city's architectural history has been well preserved in many cases, like the Opera House, El Faro Castillo del Moro, and the Hotel Saratoga. We are in Old Havana, and Old Havana is a walking museum everywhere. So Saratoga has to form part of this museum. Antonio Sabate Terez is the hotel's general manager. This design it's, uh, uh, looks like a Spanish patio in the south of Spain. The hotel was built in 1879, originally just three stories tall. Since then, developers added another two floors, renovated the interior, and added the crowning glory, a rooftop pool with a view. All of these changes have caught the attention of several American celebrities. Who has stayed in this room? Where are we? Well, this, uh, first, Madonna with uh, her anniversary, then Beyonce, Jay-Z, Ashton Kutcher, Susan Sarandon. This is the Beyonce suite. Beyonce and Jay-Z came to Cuba in 2013, taking to their hotel balcony to greet the fans below and snap a few pictures themselves. Havana has something different. It's a, a matter of the history, the culture, the music is safe. You can walk around here 2 a.m. in the morning. Nobody is going to bother you. If you are lost, they are going to help you. That's the Cuban humanity. The Saratoga welcomes visitors from all over the globe, but hit its peak for American occupancy from 2014 to 2017. The trumpeter plays Besame Mucho, the unsung lyrics, a plea for a kiss that could be the last. Conjuring the question, what does the future hold for the relationship between the U.S. and Cuba?
And right now, Americans can travel to Cuba yep. under 12 different license categories. That includes support for the people of Cuba, mm -hmm. uh, religious or educational activities, or family visits. And they have to stick to specific rules when they're there. They have to. They can only travel. Um, that is with specific activities and a specific schedule in mind, and they have to keep records of all transactions within five years that they buy while they're there in Cuba. Right, exactly. All right, conga through the streets of Cuba next. This was one of the pinnacle events of the Getting Funky in Havana Festival, a first-of-its-kind week-long celebration of sound 